guys and welcome back to the Spruce and Linen channel. I'm Janelle and today I'm going to be showing you another way to incorporate negative space into your weaving. This is kind of like an embroidery or lace technique and it adds a really beautiful effect. So let's get started. This video is brought to you by the Spruce and Linen shop where you can find weaving kits, tools, materials, and supplies. Link in the description box below. Okay, so you can see here I have a few rows of plain weave spread out across my weaving and I'm going to be showing you within these spaces how to do this technique and I'll show you two different ways. The first way, I'm going to use a contrasting string just so you can really see what I'm doing. But you could use um, a thicker piece of yarn or the same as your warp string. There's lots of different ways you can do this to really play around with this effect. So I'm just using a little darning needle here since my th thread is so thin. And I'm gonna be working in groups of three um, because that's, the, that's what worked out on my weaving. But if you wanted to do more or less, depending on how many strings that you have on your warp, you can do that as well. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna come under three strings. We're gonna pull that string through and I'm gonna leave myself a tail, a tail here that I can um, cut later. And then I'm creating this little loop, just like so. We're gonna go back under those same three and we're gonna come up through the loop. I'm holding on to the tail so that it doesn't um, come out. And then you're just going to tighten those strings. And so basically we're just creating this really beautiful gathered effect and having the strings having weaving above and below where you're doing this is going to ensure that you're not really making your warp wonky or <laughs> warped <laughs> if you will and we're going to do that again i'm going to do the same thing all the way across but i'll show you a couple more times so now that we're in from the end once again going under three and here you want to make sure that this is nice and taut between or else it's going to be kind of loosey-goosey so under three we've created this little loop we're going to go under those same three and coming up through the loop and then when you get to tightening make sure that you're pulling so that it stays tight between not too hard so that you're gathering them all And now we have our second little bunch. So you can see here, I do have a little bit of slack in between, so that's where you wanna make sure you're nice and tight. So we're gonna keep going across under three, creating your little loop. I'm gonna hold this string tight this time as I go through, and then coming up through the loop. You can see again, I'm holding that nice and tight while I pull this so that it just doesn't create so much slack this time. And now we have our next little grouping. Under three. <laughs> Let's try that again. Now we're at the end of our row and it's going to be the same thing again. So under those last three, under again, I'll show you that loop. So we've got a loop there through the loop. And tighten it up. Now if you're concerned about it coming out you can do um, extra knotting on each end but for this I'm just going to leave a little tail. Don't want to cut it too short so that it's gonna unravel and I think that looks really cute on the ends anyway having that little tail. So that is one way of doing this. Now I'm gonna show you another way that's super straightforward but I also think looks really great and is gonna be a way where there's not these connecting strings between. And that is simply just cutting off little pieces and just tying these strings together in a knot. And I'm using the same color this time because I just kinda of want that effect where it's not really standing out. And since I did a knot, I'm gonna cut those tails off nice and short. And I'm just gonna continue knotting groups of warp strings together all the way across. Mm -hmm. 
And there are two different ways that you can use this effect. Um, I've also seen it done, you could use different colors for these little ties. You could use ribbon, um, thicker string, rope, yarn. There's so many different things you can do with this technique and I'm excited to see what you guys do with it. All right guys, so there is another way that you can incorporate negative space into your weaving. I'm so excited to see what you guys do with this effect, so make sure you tag me on Instagram and use hashtag SLWeavingClub. If you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe, and click the bell to get notifications when I post new videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. You can incorporate... <laughs> I almost said so you can incorporate weaving into your weaving. That's what we all want, right? <laughs> to be teaching you how to use an, an or <laughs> Okay. I'm gonna stop talking now. See you next week.